All right, guys, welcome back. This here is my Movedre grapevines. This is a four-arm niffin. Just as it's, you see it here, there's four arms. Um, I just got done pruning this thing here. I'm going to bring it up a little close and show you what I did. But what I have to do now is in the back, I uh, planted... Uh, two grape, th these are uh, muscadine grapes. There was a red and a white. I don't remember what variety they were, um, but I planted them five, six years ago. About, nah, six years ago for sure. Never pruned them, <laughs> never. They are just crazy wild all over the place. Um, I have to tackle that job now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it down to one uh, vine or cordon. And then from there, hopefully this year, we are going to uh, have some grapes on that, uh, on that vine this year, hopefully. But let me show you what I did here. And uh, I'm going to do the exact same thing over there when I get everything cleared out and I choose what vine I'm going to use. Because right now there is 100 vines coming out of the ground. <laughs> All right, let me bring in close here. Okay, so this is the main trunk right here. And you can see it's splitting this way. And then I have a, another vine going that way, or cordon, and one cordon going that way, and one going that way. This is the forearm niffin. Now, last year's growth, we didn't get any, uh, any well, we had a, a one or two clusters, but I took them out uh, of grapes, and I took them out because I wanted the, the uh, vines to grow bigger. So, Last year's fruiting vines now won't produce fruit themselves, but what you do is you cut it back to one or two nodes, okay? Then from here where these nodes are, you can see it's just starting to um, blossom right there, right here too. I'll have a new fruiting vine coming out of there this year where it's gonna produce fruit. So wherever they, I left these spurs, after the after the uh, fruiting vine produced last year, I cut these off. These are now spurs. These will produce a new fruiting vine where we'll get grapes this year. And wherever you see these here, I got one, two nodes there, one, two nodes there, one and two. I always like leaving two. Uh, here, I, I got a little too much going on here, but I left it because I want to produce uh, some more grapes this year and I figure this is big enough to, to feed it. Uh, what I'll do after this season's over, I'm going to trim this out to where I have about five inches or so in between, five, five to six, seven inches in between each spur. Uh, but this year I just want some more fruit this year because I know it can handle it. Um, the main trunk's big enough and I'm hoping to get some fruit this year and, and, and enjoy it. <laughs> Now with the cuttings, I usually cut them right near the nodes at the bottom and I put them in some rooting uh, hormone and I put them in these pots so you can use regular potting soil or peat moss and in no time they'll produce roots and you'll have your own new grapevines. So here you can see I can't open the gate because the vines grew right through it. And here it took me a little while to cut all the vines. I, I was amazed. It was incredible how many vines there were. And then finally I was able to open the gate.
Well, as you can see, I have a lot going on here. I have one muscadine here. I think this is the, uh, it's a dark uh, muscadine. And I have another one over there, which is a white muscadine. Here, it looks like we have a lot going on here, but the main, the main trunk I'm gonna keep Looks like this one here. This one is not too bad either. But it looks like I'm gonna keep this one. And what I need is one vine going across that way. And the same thing from the other side, one vine going across this way. From that vine, you'll get new fruit growth, okay? I gotta prune it all and leave um, um, the spurs on them. After you cut the, the, the vines, you got to leave like a spur on there with one or two buds. And uh, I'm a long way from that right now. But the main thing I have to do is leave this one, cut everything else out. And the same thing on that side, I have to figure out which one's best and in my favor and cut the rest out. Boy, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> So you can see what I've done here. I left one main trunk. I also left the best vines going that way, the, the way I want it to go. And, and there's three here, and it looks like, looks like it's gonna be this one right here. Because it's the longest, it's the thickest, and it's the one that's gonna produce the most um, fruiting uh, vines. So I'm gonna keep that one, which is the middle one here. I mean, ideally you'd want it up here, but it's okay. So I'll cut these two away, but I'm gonna leave them just a little bit long so it'll start sprouting out of here also in the future if I need to put another cane going this way, um, if this one doesn't make it. Okay, so I got these three here, and this is the one I wanna keep. It's the longest and the strongest. So the other two I'm going to cut off. We're going to cut this one off. Here's a node, node. We're going to just cut it off probably right there. Okay, that's gone. I got to whittle that one out. And this one here also, we got to take this one out. Now I just got to whittle these out of this fence and I will be left with this one here. Okay, so what I want to do here is bring this up to about right there and then bring this down. I don't want to bend this too much. I don't want to break it, obviously. Um, you don't want to use anything. If, if, if the vine doesn't cooperate with you and it's too stiff, um, don't bend it too much because it could break. And if it breaks, well... <laughs> You just wasted your time. Let me just put that there for now, see what that's gonna look like. Then the rest I can tie here like this. Tie that, yeah, that'll work, okay. Now because I cut all the other vines away, all the energy on that uh, trunk is gonna go to this vine right here. And this thing's gonna explode. It should, anyways. That's the plan. <laughs> okay, that'll stay. I'm just gonna do that along the fence here and put this on top and uh, trim off. Uh, I mean, there's, whole, there's not a whole lot of spurs on this, but there's a lot of nodes where they should start budding and uh, producing more um, fruit vines, fruiting vines. Many of you remember Coco. Coco's just wandering around seeing what I'm doing. Okay, so what I have here is the main trunk. And then I have it splitting here. Going along the fence, I got it tied really good. Now you see this, this here, I need to cut this off. So what I'm gonna do is 
cut that off. I'm going to leave a couple of a uh, couple of buds here. We got one, two, three. We'll just cut that off um, for this year. My main concern is just to have, I just want to see what will grow out of this. Like I said, all the energy now is going to go to this one vine. And this is going to explode. Out of each node here, we should be getting some uh, new, uh, new fruit growth, actually. Um, these, these will probably put out some, uh, these, we'll call this a spur, but this is an older vine. Um, this, was, this should put out some uh, new growth also pretty soon. And along with the one I just cut, that's why I left a few nodes on there. Um, normally you'd leave one or two, uh, but I left an extra one because, uh, you know, it's just a small vine and I want to see how big the fruit will get, whatever I get out of it this year. And this is some dead stuff here. I got to cut that off. But that's it. And that's going to go up to the middle of this fence. I still have yet to work on that side, but it's the same principle. Whittle everything down until you find the best vine and keep it. Okay, so this is quite an improvement. Much better. Let me show you up close what I did and what, I'm, what I still have to do. Okay, so you can see what happened here on the corner of the fence. From the main trunk, a vine went along the ground, rooted into the ground come up and I'm continuing continuing it on the fence here so it can continue on down um, wherever there's a node right here these will all sprout and there'll be new fruiting vines that's where your where your grapes are going to be um, I'll take one of those and just continue it on down that that little uh, fruiting vine will eventually just keep growing and uh, those nodes will produce more fruiting vines and just keep continuing down the fence. Um, so let me bring you over to the other side. Okay, so here we have the main trunk. Again, the one went underground and it went to the corner of the fence. Now we got the main trunk and I'm bringing it up along the top of the fence here. And it goes almost halfway here. So again, what's going to start happening, wherever there's a node, there will be a um, fruiting vine coming up. These are the older vines. This is probably two years old or more. Um, I cut it off. I left a couple of nodes there. These will spread or uh, uh, bud and produce a new fruiting vine. Here will produce a new fruiting vine and so on and so forth. Um, same thing here. Here's a node and a node here, and there's probably one back here too. But these will all produce a fruiting vine, should anyways. Um, so on this other side here, these are the white muscadines. I cut everything else out of the way. I picked the, I picked the best vine, of course, and uh, cut everything else out of the way. Same thing here, continued on. These I have to all cut now. I have to cut them and leave about one or two nodes. See, like I did this one, left one or two here, nodes. And this is kind of wimpy, kind of skimpy here, uh, but it'll grow. Um, probably won't grow much fruit on this side, but over on this side, it'll grow more fruit. Um, then it'll get bigger the following year, and so on and so forth. Okay, so same vine I just talked about. You can see one vine went across right there, rooted into the ground, there's roots in the ground from it, and shot up over here, up along my fence, and it just continues all the way down. This is beautiful because this was all, well not all of it, but a lot of it was uh, last year's growth where we had fruit on here. Um, these are the older ones, probably the year before, and you see they'll sprout out new growth and then the fruit will grow here. So what we want to do is cut it back down to about here. Let me get my clippers here. So one, two nodes, cut that off, 
these are just the uh, tentacles or the tendrils I'm sorry tentacles <laughs> um, so now now here the fruit will come out of here now the the um, um, the new growth so every one of these we're gonna leave one or two nodes on there everyone all the way down that will ensure we want to be closer to the main vine is what I'm trying to say see I'm, every one of these will produce you could see here we had some uh, a cluster here so this was the, the growth from uh, last year new growth and we produce fruit so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it back and leave two here two nodes now it'll sprout out of here the new growth and produce fruit. That's all you want to leave, one or two nodes. Uh, just cut that off there. And I might have to I might have to tie some of this up. Same thing here. Yeah, I could probably cut it right there. One or two. And just keep on going down. Some of these are kind of small. But it's okay. Give them a chance. And that's all we're trying to do. I mean, ideally, you want to pick the ones that are facing up. But it's okay. I just want fruit. Um, this will start, these were vines are going every which way. I could just terminate this right here. In fact, I think I, yeah, I think I will. I mean, I could have grew, it would have grown um, more uh, fruiting vines there, but it's okay. We got plenty here, and uh, that's all we're doing. And just leaving a couple of uh, nodes. And hopefully this year we'll have some uh, fruit. Now if you don't prune, it's going to start sprouting out of the last year's growth, and then next year it'll start sprouting out of the next year's growth, and it'll keep getting longer and longer and longer and the fruit will get smaller and smaller and smaller and we don't want that. And these here near the base, I'm just going to clip these off completely. I don't think I want any fruit down near close to the ground. And that'll give more energy, of course, to the rest of the vine. Man, am I glad this is over. I dreaded doing this, but I knew I had to. This was neglected for five, uh, maybe six years. Uh, we put them in here when we first moved in there. Yeah, it's been going, probably going on seven now. Um, but at least six years, we put up the, uh, the reds here and the white muscadines over there. And uh, I put this fence up here. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew it needed some kind of trellis. And, uh, but this will work, this will work. So now I got this all cleared out of the way. I got my vines all where I want them. And hopefully this year we'll get some fruit. You have to prune every winter and um, cut back the new growth, the previous year's growth to little nubs. About, you know, like I said, two or about one or two uh, nodes and those are the spurs now and um, and that'll produce bigger fruit much bigger fruit because the fruit we were getting from here was very tiny um, they were just you know pop them in your mouth little tiny things um, and they were kind of uh, very tardy you know really tart and uh, tough skins now we should produce bigger and sweeter fruit. So that's what I'm looking forward to. This is something I had to do five years ago. <laughs> um, but now that's all out of the way, I got some extra growth here. 
on the fence and on that side too. And this here we should, uh, we should do pretty good. So guys, I appreciate you watching. I hope you learned a little bit of uh, how to prune here. And uh, please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video.